The discovery of an elliptical basin with lines intersecting at 60 degrees on its west side has generated a lot of interest in Tulsa, Oklahoma. The basin has the elliptical geometry, the raised rims, and the orientation toward the Great Lakes typical of the Carolina Bays. So it is presumed to have originated from an oblique impact that created an inclined conical cavity, but the lines carved on the site indicate that it could have been adapted as a ritual site for Native Americans. Welcome to another edition of the Carolina Bay of the Day, where we study the secondary impacts made by the glacierized boulders that were ejected by an extraterrestrial impact on the Laurentide Ice Sheet. There is a link to the LiDAR visualization tool for Google Earth by Michael Davies in the description of the video. Eric Brown, who is an engineer, started looking for potential impact basins around Tulsa, Oklahoma, because Tulsa is located within 1,500 kilometers of Saginaw Bay, which has been proposed as the site of the extraterrestrial impact from which pieces of ice were ejected ballistically to create impact basins like the Carolina Bays. Eric found a very well-preserved elliptical basin on the grounds of the Oxley Nature Center of Tulsa, Oklahoma. After I verified the image, I wrote an email to Eddie Reese, who is the director of the Oxley Nature Center, asking if he had information about the elliptical structure. I also asked Eric Brown to contact me by email. There are several remarkable features about this basin. It has precise elliptical geometry, and there are some lines on the west side of the basin that intersect at a 60-degree angle. The Tulsa structure has some design elements that are similar to the Serpent Mound in Ohio. This brought up the question of whether the 15-meter berm that has been sculpted around the elliptical basin and the lines are of pre-Columbian origin. Very quickly, Eddie Reese and Eric Brown started to contact some experts to study the elliptical basin and the enigmatic lines. Eddie is handling the permissions to access and protect the area, and he is researching historical information. Eric has been communicating with archaeologists and geologists to organize surveys using ground-penetrating radar and other types of equipment. It may also be necessary to consult with tribal nations to see if the lines are Native American cultural artifacts. The discovery of the Tulsa Basin is actually a rediscovery. Eddie Reese provided an aerial photograph from 1943 that shows the elliptical feature. Eddie mentioned that the Civilian Conservation Corps back in the 1930s were surface mining the depression for limestone to build the picnic shelters in the park, but this was just hearsay and he had not seen any documentation. In 1943, the basin was filled with water and it was used as a swimming hole and also as a fish pond. This image has low resolution. The lines to the west of the ellipse are very faint, but they are still there. Clearer versions of this image will be available later. In 1954, the basin was dry. Rows of trees lined the trench along the length of the basin. This type of growth is typical on the banks of creeks in arid environments. This satellite image from November 2020 shows that the elliptical basin has been completely overgrown by vegetation. The new research should be able to determine the history of the Tulsa Basin. The Tulsa Basin has mathematically elliptical geometry and raised rims, which are features of oblique impacts on viscous ground. The heading of the major axis is 237 degrees. Extending the line toward the Great Lakes, we find that the line comes within 50 kilometers of Saginaw Bay, which is the convergence point calculated for the Carolina Bays and the Nebraska Rainwater Basins. This map shows a circle with a radius of 1,500 kilometers centered at Saginaw Bay. Most of the impact basins are found within this circle as indicated by the orange coloration. There are a few basins beyond the circle in Mississippi and Alabama. In 2010, Davies and Gilbride found that taking into consideration the rotation of the Earth, the major axis of the Carolina Bays and the Nebraska Rainwater Basins converged at Saginaw Bay. The glacier ice impact hypothesis proposes that an extraterrestrial impact on the Laurentide ice sheet ejected pieces of ice in ballistic trajectories. The oblique secondary impacts of the ice ejecta liquefied on consolidated ground and created inclined conical cavities with raised rims that became shallow elliptical basins after viscous relaxation. The Tulsa Basin has elliptical geometry, raised rims, and the orientation toward Saginaw Bay, which indicates that it probably originated in the same way as the Carolina Bays. I need to point out that the glacier ice impact hypothesis is a fairly new hypothesis, and it is not generally accepted by geologists. 
Many studies have shown that the terrain where the Carolina bays are found has a wide range of dates and this is interpreted to mean that the Carolina bays could not have been created by a single event like an extraterrestrial impact. Geologists generally attribute the origin of the basins to the action of wind and water over thousands of years and the geometry is generally not considered. It will not be easy to convince geologists that the Tulsa Basin is an impact structure created 12,900 years ago, particularly since it has a history of having been used and reused for different purposes. The fact that the Civilian Conservation Corps was working there in the 1930s also increases the possibility that the Tulsa Basin is a man-made structure which makes the impact origin of the basin even more doubtful. In order to make the glacier ice impact hypothesis more credible, I felt that it was necessary to find another elliptical basin in Oklahoma so that the impact origin of the Tulsa Basin could not be easily dismissed. I concentrated my search within the northeast section of Oklahoma that is within 1,500 kilometers from Saginaw Bay, marked by the Yellow Triangle. The inset shows the location of the Tulsa Basin. I started looking for flat areas with a single color in the LiDAR images and an hour later I found an elliptical basin about 2 miles southeast of South Coffeyville, Oklahoma. The basin is 2.5 kilometers or 1.5 miles south of the Kansas state line. The basin has a width of 191 meters and a length of 300 meters. This is about the same length as the Tulsa Basin. The basin has the elliptical geometry expected for an inclined conical cavity made by an oblique impact. The satellite image shows some farm fields with a slightly greener elliptical feature that is very difficult to discern. Placing an ellipse over the basin in the satellite image does not help much. While the Tulsa Basin has been carefully preserved, the South Coffeyville Basin has been plowed and cultivated for many years. Google does not have a street view of the road that crosses the basin. This satellite image shows the furrows of the crops and the curved tracks left by a tractor as it turned at the end of the rows. Based on my prior experience with this type of landscape, I am sure that there is nothing to see except flat terrain with crops to the left and to the right of the road. A line drawn along the major axis of the South Coffeyville Basin has a heading of 207 degrees. The Tulsa Basin is aligned with Saginaw Bay, but the Coffeyville Basin is aligned to Lake Superior. Why is this? We have to consider that some glacier ice boulders collided within the ejecta curtain and their ballistic trajectories were altered, but we also need to take into account that the impact hypothesis is a work in progress and it is not easy to figure out everything that happened during the chaotic cataclysm 12,900 years ago. We should not be afraid of facts, we need to understand facts to determine where they lead us. This is the only way in which we discover new things. In 2009, Richard Firestone proposed that multiple extraterrestrial impacts from a fragmenting comet were involved in the Younger Dryas extraterrestrial impact event. One of Firestone's images says that the deep holes in the Great Lakes extend well below the sea level and the bottoms of the three lakes are deeper than Death Valley. This image shows the deepest hole in Lake Superior. Firestone suggests that Lake Superior is the impact site of a comet fragment. Another impact site in this image is Lake Huron, which is the location of Saginaw Bay. If there were multiple impact sites on the Laurentide Ice Sheet as Firestone proposes, it may be necessary to re-examine the convergence points of the Carolina Bays and the Nebraska Rainwater Basins. The Tulsa Basin has very well defined raised rims, whereas the South Coffee Bill Basin has almost been leveled to a flat surface by agricultural activity. The same contrast of well-defined basins and flattened basins can be seen in the Carolina Bays 7 kilometers west of Red Springs, North Carolina. The terrain conditions and the use of the land determine the degree of preservation of the basins. Geologists should pay attention to the geometry of the basins. It is very important. The Carolina Bays and other basins created by oblique impacts are elliptical because they originated as inclined conical cavities. They are conic sections. The Carolina Bay highlighted in the center has a major axis of 929 meters. It is more than three times larger than the Tulsa Basin. An experimental model demonstrates that the inclined conical cavities look elliptical when viewed from above. I achieved my goal of giving the geologists in Oklahoma a second example of an elliptical basin. Now it will not be so easy to attribute the Tulsa Basin to human activity even though it has been modified by humans. Geologists will have to consider the impact hypothesis more seriously. 
When I found the South Coffee Bill Basin, I stopped searching. There may be more elliptical basins in Oklahoma that have not been discovered yet. Thank you for joining me in the investigation of the Carolina Bays and the Younger Dryas Cataclysm. I will continue to examine the Carolina Bays one bay at a time. My book about the Carolina Bays is available at Amazon. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel to be notified of future videos about the Carolina Bays.